Welcome to worship at Arapahoe UMC here in Richardson, Texas. We are so glad that you are joining us from wherever you may be. My name is Lily and I am one of the youth here and this morning is our student Sunday. All of worship will be led by the youth of Arapahoe. We are continuing our worship series called Resurrecting Faith and this morning we are going to be discovering what it means to live life with a living God. If this is your very first time watching or you have been atten attending online for a while, we want to get to know you more. The best way to do that is to fill out the I'm New connection form at arapahoeumc.org slash new. This will help our pastors get in touch with you to share more about the ministry and the mission of Arapahoe. Also, we have upcoming classes and gatherings and the best way for you to know everything that is going on in the community is for you to be sure you are signed up for our email newsletter, which comes out every Thursday. Sign up at arapahoeumc.org slash newsletter. Welcome to worship. There's no space that his love can't reach. There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. spread wide. Take me like an orphan child. Never let go, never leave my side. I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm, I'm holding on ask you to join me in prayer. Dear Lord, there are often times in life where we wonder if you can really hear us or really can communicate. Uh, although not directly, there are plenty of ways you work. So uh, all of you, I, I ask you to pray for those who have been sick, those who have been grieving, those who have been uh, sad, lonely, or afraid. Although some may not see it yet, you're there for them. Pray and give thanks for the joys in our life, the little things that you provide that make it worth it. Now, as the Lord uh, taught us to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, along with it being Student Sunday, it is also a very special Sunday where we are recognizing George Sikowski, who is a graduating senior. Woohoo! He attends uh, J.J. Pierce. He is a part of their band and Boy Scouts and so many other wonderful things. And so um, we are just so excited to celebrate him and all of his accomplishments. He will be going to the University of Arkansas uh, this fall to major in engineering. And um, so, George, we are just so excited for all the ways that you have served Arapaho. So thankful for all the ways that you've served Arapaho and beyond and are thankful for the ways that you have um, been in ministry with us. And we're excited for the ways that God is going to continue to work in and through your life. And so um, we would like to present you this morning with the Open Door Scholarship. Um, Open Door Sunday School class presents one of our seniors every year um, who has been a part of Arapaho, who has grown up here, who has um, been a part of its ministries with this wonderful scholarship to help a little bit out with um, maybe books or tuition, whatever your heart desires. And so we just want to say congratulations and thank you for all the wonderful things. We pray that you may always know that Arapaho is home and that you are always welcome here. And so myself, along with Pastor Scott, and our whole church. Um, friends, if you are online, will you put congrats or a big woohoo in the chat? Friends who are here in the sanctuary, can we give a big round of applause to George? And so, George, we love you. We're proud of you. Thank you for everything, and we look forward to seeing what God will continue to do in your life. We love you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself was in the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Good morning. My name is Sarah Brooks. I'm 13 years old. Our family has been a part of Arapaho UMC since 2017. I'm here this morning to talk with you about my experience with this church and what Arapaho means to me. First of all, Arapaho has allowed me to grow and explore my own faith. In confirmation class, we visited different houses of worship. From the Jewish synagogue and the Islamic mosque, we were able to meet with faith leaders, experience their worship, and ask questions about their beliefs. We also worshiped with other Christians like our friends at Hamilton Park UMC. There, we got to experience a lively worship service, then work with their youth collecting food for charity. Second, Arapaho inspired me by seeking social justice and equality. I'm proud to be a part of a church and community that stands up for the oppressed and marginalized just as Jesus called his followers to do. I remember the day our church stood up for our LGBTQ plus siblings by voting to allow same-sex marriage and openly gay clergy. I also remember marching in the Black Lives Matter rally in 2020 with Pastor, Pastor Blair, Pastor Scott, Pastor Kathy, and Pastor Maggie. Seeing our church leaders stand up and march during this difficult time in our country made me feel proud to be part of this community. From our work at Austin Street Shelter, to network community ministries, to justice for our neighbors, Arapaho works hard for our siblings in need. We are truly following the teachings of Christ. Finally, Arapaho allows me to participate in a youth group. Our youth group uh, in our youth group, we are allowed to ask difficult questions and have open conversations without judgment. We are an inclusive group teens and preteens all experiencing God together. While I have not had the opportunity to experience one of our summer mission projects because of COVID, I am hopeful and excited about the future missions we have planned. All I have today 
exists because of people like you care for me and others. Your support of this church, our missions, and our youth have made these experiences possible. For that, I am grateful to all of you. Thank you for allowing me to share my experiences and thoughts this morning. Hi, my name is Amelia. I'm a junior in high school. Now, I was told this prompt and just had to speak on it. The questions were, how has your life been shaped by AUMC? And where have I experienced this life with living God at AUMC? Now, this point I could speak on for hours. However, I will save you the time and speak on a short amount. Now, y'all, a little backstory about me. I have, had what, I have not had what you call the normal life, whatever normal may be. I've struggled with mental illness throughout my life, so I've struggled throughout my faith for many years. I would wonder and get angry, asking God, why do this to me? If you love me, why? Now, when I got here, I admit, I wasn't very faithful. But when I walked in the first time at AUMC, this little church that was so accepting, and a great sign outside with amazing puns and jokes, this was a welcoming and new area. The fact that we are so accepting and a loving church is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. Now, I sat down and was expecting to be on my phone. But when Pastor Blair started talking, I couldn't help but be drawn in. She hit me hard and spoke to me. She spoke about acceptance and how God loves each and every one of us. What really hit home was when she talked about how we as a church are LGBTQ+, positive about everything. I've always had that standpoint, but never heard any church really speak on it. When she spoke on this on such a positive format, I instantly knew this was the church for me. I remember crying that day because I found my faith. This church has shaped my faith and shown me God really does have plans and goals to help each and every one of us. I really saw this on my first mission trip. I had never been on a mission trip before coming to this church. When we went, I was so excited and a little nervous. I had just really started going to church, so I was kind of new. But when we got to the Appalachian Mountains and met the people and families we would be working with, I was so excited to meet them. When I met my family, they were so nice and kind. It was a it was a trailer home that was falling apart at the seams. We were there to fix their roof, and wow, it was fun. We really talked about God and got to know the family. They had a little girl, and she had a dream of being a gymnast. She would say hi to us every day and loved talking to us. I remember all of the memories I had there, and one of my favorites was actually really funny. <laughs> I was working and fell off the roof. I couldn't help but laugh because all I could think of was when I thought to myself that same day, wow, I can't believe no one has fallen off the roof yet. But I really loved the mission trip and how God put me there to have such a great story and even closer relationship with him. Just like how everyone has a story, and God, I promise, has a plan for you to follow him and grow in the end. But hopefully that growth doesn't involve roof falling. So thank you for letting me speak today. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, out, thank you for coming out to watch us this morning or watching us online. This season is important to us seniors because we are on the brink of graduation and are going to carve our own way after that point. It definitely is a different sensation being the oldest in a youth group. I have seen this season roll by time and time again. And before the ninth grade, I thought nothing about it. When I got into high school, I saw the class of 2018 graduate after a year and physically went to their assembly. The cool thing is, is after high school, they all went their own ways to pursue their own dreams. As a high schooler, I've always looked towards that future, but I also live in the present as to not miss anything good right now. With that said, it's important for me to reflect on why I have the values that I do today, and a lot of that is due to this church that I grew up in. The youth group is important to me because everyone was very friendly, and I felt more involved in my own Christian life. We have more opportunities to talk about how our faith applies in the real world and to our own lives, and everyone brings their own perspective. After a meeting, I walk away with a stronger understanding of my Christian self. Through the youth group and the church, I have seen how we can be Christians in the midst of the real world. This is also the time when I enjoyed serving the public inside and outside the group and hanging out with everyone. My experience in Arapaho United Methodist Church has been important to me because I have developed a lot because of it. Without the message of the church, I would not have accomplished what I have and would not have served others in a way that I have. Learning the Word of God via the youth group has helped me live a more fulfilling life. I'm often more motivated and positive because of it, especially in the face of challenges and conflicts. 
that every day throws at us. It has also led me to serving others more in the community. Due to numerous summer conflicts, I was available for only one mission trip to Baton Rouge, Louisiana in the eighth grade, but I made the most of it. We repaired the homes of lower income families that were damaged by a flood. I work hard and efficiently when I know what I'm doing, so when I learned how to drywall and attach the insulation, I got involved very quickly. The work was vital for Baton Rouge res residents with their homes damaged by the most recent flood. It was clear that we were doing God's work when we got the homeowners back on their feet. It was very cool meeting many others from Spring Valley UNC and socializing and playing games with them. I felt great about the work we were doing because it was needed there. Mission trips are the most Christian activities that we can do because we are doing God's work by serving others in such a powerful way. In that week, God was present in Baton Rouge, giving homeowners their homes back, the place they feel the most safe. In the years after that, he was present in Galveston and Houston for Hurricane Harvey relief and in the Appalachian Mountains for home repairs. Supporting and funding church missions gives people back on their feet across the country. The church has also inspired me to be active in my community outside its physical walls. I have served at meal deliveries and food banks because this work is especially important to the people around us. Making life easier for those lacking essential resources is a great thing. It might seem boring at first um, to spend time making food orders, um, driving around Dallas apartments, um, delivering food, or this, that, and the other. However, I knew that every step of the process would get help for people who are greatly in need. This work really was really needed more when COVID hit and people were furloughed, stressing their financial situations. More citizens signed up for food banks, and one of them in particular, Network, had the amount of helpers increased to meet this high demand. When COVID hit, we made the decision as a family to donate food and deliver meals across the Dallas area once a week. More and more people were in need, so we did what we could to make their challenging lives easier. We would not have made that decision if we weren't part of a church like this, because we wouldn't have known this as our calling. A lot of Christianity boils down to going out and serving others and serving God and his green earth in the process. And finally, without the message of God, I wouldn't have gone through with my Eagle Project. If you haven't heard, I built four garden boxes for the church's day school last June. The work to plan, develop, and lead required determination. This came from my will to earn a challenging award through my scout troop, but the troop is a group that aspires to be more like God every day. A more positive view on life and the push to serve others motivated me to finish the project despite COVID and the challenges with, associated with planning a large project. Um, I know some scripture has been read, but I found some powerful texts about what being a church is all about. This comes from Acts chapter 20, verses 32 through 35. The context before this, these verses deals with internal conflict among a group and conflict in the world around them. And so the text says, And now I commend you to God in the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold. You know that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this, I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus who said, It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Even though there is conflict all around us, it's important to remember that our Creator sees it as blessed to give always. The work we do in the community and across the nation are our ways of giving. I encourage the church to continue serving in the community and sending mission trips because this is how we really serve God. I also want to thank this place for providing an open community to enhance my faith. The ability to accept all people into the congregation is not something every church does, but it's really important to the community around us. This place matters because anyone can come, find something to believe, and gain a more positive view on life. Like I know a friend, I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. Like I know a friend, I want to know you, Lord. I'm laying down all my religion. I'm laying 
laying down. I want to know you, Lord. I'm laying down all my religion. I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord. I used to think that I box you in, but I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord. I used to think that I box you in, but I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord. I'm laying down all my reasons. to invite you to a couple of opportunities of service and community coming up. We are going to be able to get together in person June 7th to 10th, and we'll be having mountains of fun at Rocky Railway and discovering how Jesus carries us through our ups and downs. So if you have children age four through having finished fourth grade, please visit our website arapahoumc.org slash VBS to register and for more information. If you have any questions, please feel free to email Pastor Maggie or Pastor Eliana. If you are a guest here or have been visiting for a while, we are excited you are here. Our visitors group, Coffee and Connection with Pastor Scott, will meet this month. We encourage you to come share some stories and learn about the people, vision, and ministries of our community. This meeting will take place on Zoom for the time being. So pour your own cup of joe or tea or OJ, gather on Zoom, meet some new people, and connect with Pastor Scott on May 16th at 10 a.m., or on May 18th at 8 p.m. Register at arapahoumc.org slash connect.
My name is Chrislyn Hart, and I'm a seventh grader at Westwood Junior High. I have been raised at AUMC and enjoy lots of church activities. As a seventh grader, this is my first year in youth. From my very first meeting, all the other kids have made me feel welcome. They were nice to me and made me feel part of the group. Youth has impacted me personally by helping me learn about God and realize how important he is in my life. I know youth has helped lots of people understand how important God is and how he helps us. I love youth because the leaders listen to you and what's going on in your life. They care about each of us. We have opportunities to say what we want to include in our prayers. Youth has helped lots of people. They taught me to pray more and to pay more attention to things. They congratulate us on things we accomplish because they know how hard we work. They taught me to appreciate the things that I have and why it is important to give to others. I am looking forward to doing fun things with the youth after the pandemic. I have heard lots of stories from the older youth members about things they have done in the past. I'm excited to help people go on mission trips, help at the church, and learn more about God and Jesus. Friends, we want to thank you for your continued generosity and the all, all the ways that you give um, to the ministries here at Arapahoe United Methodist Church. And stories like Chrislin's is one of the ways um, that your giving matters. Stories like hers, Sunday mornings like this, happen because of your generosity. And so if you are looking to um, donate this month, we'd love to invite you. There are three easy ways to do that. You can text GIVE to the word, uh, text GIVE to the number you see on your screen. You can go to our website, arapahoumc.org slash donate, and you can find information there to sign up for our reoccurring giving through ACH, or you can give through a credit card um, payment. And as always, you can mail a check to 1400 West Arapaho Road, Richardson, Texas, 75080. And friends, again, we just want to thank you for your generosity, for the love that you have shown our youth, our students, and for all of their hard work this morning, and for all the ministry that we do together here at Arapaho and beyond. Thank you all for being here with us this morning to celebrate our senior. May we all experience a life with our living God, leading us to be more compassionate and loving and seeking justice for all people. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God be with you all. Go in peace. There's no space that his love can't reach. There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me in with your arms spread wide. Take me in like an orphan child. Never let go, never 